Hello everyone and welcome to the class. This is David A. Cox with PCClassesOnline.com and today we are talking all about the program Evernote. Uh, we're going to be talking all about the software today, how to, uh, some of the different uses that you can use with it. Um, and so I think we're going to have a lot of fun. This class is being taught live right now. We have people tuning in from all over the world. We have people in Australia, the UK, Philippines, all over the United States. If any of you are watching this later on, either on our website or on YouTube, you can take all of our live classes completely for free. We are a free public service, of course, at pcclassesonline.com. Now let's get started. So Evernote is basically a really popular note-taking application with a couple of other kind of alternative uses, some of which I'm going to give you examples of today so that you can integrate it with different devices. One of the things that people really love about Evernote is the fact that it runs on virtually everything out there. It runs on Mac, PC, iPhone, iPad, Android, Chrome, the web, you name it. So that basically whatever documents you have, whatever notes you have, you can have with you no matter where you are in the world. Even if you don't have your computer, you can just go to Evernote.com and get access to it. Um, now, Evernote has two different versions. They have a free version and they have a paid version. I don't think the paid version is going to be for a lot of you. For some people, it's going to be great, especially people in business. Um, one of the things I want to throw out there is for any of you who want to just kind of try it out, you can get a free month of Evernote Premium by going to this link. Now, for those of you who are watching this video either on our YouTube channel or on our website, you will find that same link uh, beneath the video in the description so you can go there too. Um, for those of you who are here live, uh, you can pull it up later on. Um, but Evernote Premium, I like to be very honest with people. You know what? It's not for everyone. Um, and I'm going to go over the key features that you do get with it uh, later on in the class. Now, the first thing I want to talk about that seems to confuse some people is I want to talk about hierarchy. So at the very, very bottom level, you have your notes. Those are the individual documents that you're creating. Here you'll see a bunch of the ones that we just kind of created. These are all dummy notes uh, from the other day when I was teaching this class live. Forgive me, let me mute my iPad, which I have in the background, and normally I'm very good at doing. Uh, all right, turn that off. Sorry about that. So at the very bottom level, we have notes. Now above notes, we have something called a notebook. Easiest way to think of a notebook is it's just like a folder, okay? So a notebook holds your notes. On top of that, we have something called a stack, okay? And a stack is basically a collection of notebooks. So let me give you an example here. This is one I created the other day. Let's pretend that I am going to be looking at purchasing a new home. I'm not, but let's pretend I am. You would create a series of notebooks for each individual house. Now the way you do this, if you look over here on the left hand side, this is kind of our guide for where we can go. You'd go here under notebooks. I'm actually going to just wipe this out right now so that I can show you from scratch. I would go right here into notebooks and you'll notice that at the very top there's a button that has a plus symbol and it says new notebook. So what I would do if I want to create a stack is I would first create a new notebook and I'll call it house one. Okay. Oh, sorry. I have the other one still right there. Ha ha ha. Delete. Okay. So we have a notebook here called house one. Then I'd create another one. Let's call it house two. Now to create a stack, all you need to do is take two notebooks and you're going to drag one into the other. The order does not matter. So I can take house two, drag it into house one, and you'll see it becomes a stack. If I want to rename it, it's as easy as simply clicking on it. Your text is highlighted, so I can now type in whatever I want. So I can say, sorry about that. And so now if I were to double click here, you'd see the two stacks that I have within them. Now to create a note, it's very simple. All you have to do is actually go here on the left hand side in the navigation menu and you just simply go up here and say plus new note. Now ignore the part where it says here where it says import of Viarda that has to do with the class we were teaching before. 
One of the things that you can do in Evernote is you can create a default location for where you want your notes to go. For example, a lot of people use a feature in Evernote where you can use it to capture receipts. And I'm going to give you a few tricks at the end for how to actually have it automatically do that for you. So here you'd hit New Note, okay? And you just simply start typing in the title of your note, okay? So I can call it Dummy Note. And then there's a couple of things you can do from here. First of all, you'll notice that at the top here it says click to add tags. This works basically the same way that software like Pages works. So if it's the kind of thing where maybe it's a recipe, I can put in certain keywords so that as I start to acquire more and more notes in Evernote, I can search and just have it immediately pull up all of my recipes, for example, that have to do with chocolate. Okay, you'll see here on the left hand side we have one we created the other day, just a dummy recipe for chocolate cake. Maybe I want to create one for brownies. Okay, so I could put in here a keyword of chocolate. And you'll see here that because I've used it before, it auto fills. So now when I want to actually create my note, I can just click in here and you get a lot of the standard things, standard items you'd get with most Word document software, whether you're in Word or Pages. So up here, of course, we have our font, the font size. I'm going to show you later on how to make that custom, uh, how to customize it so that it stays a consistent font. Your basic bold, italicize, and underline options. Next, we have a little lowercase a here with a color underneath. That's just simply the color of your text. Next here, we have an icon of a highlighter. So if you want to highlight a certain piece of it, just like you had a normal highlighter, you can highlight it in yellow, for example. Next here, we have two different, actually three different options for creating lists. This is one of the very popular uses for Evernote, is creating things like shopping lists, checklists, etc. So the first item you see here is a bullet list. And obviously, I would type in item one, hit the enter or return key, and I get my next bullet point. Okay, I'm going to wipe that out. Now the next option here is a numbered list, so you can just guess it adds 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And the final option we have here, very handy, especially for if you're trying to coordinate with other people, is we have a checkbox option. So one of the things a lot of people will do, especially families, I think, uh, can, can benefit from this, is one person will have a premium account for Evernote. And you do need to have a premium account to share with other people so that they can alter the document. So this person, it might be that you're going to be taking a trip. Okay? And you have certain items that you want to make sure that you remember to bring with you on your trip. So you might want to remember to bring, you know, uh, sunscreen, um, bug spray, etc. And so what this person could do is create this note and in a little bit I'm going to show you how you can share this document with other people and then that way if mom goes to the grocery store and picks up sunscreen she can hit the checkbox here and everyone else will see it so that not five you know five people don't buy the same item. Also here, we have your paragraph styles, okay, so you can, al I'm sorry, your alignment options rather, so you can align your text to the left, center, right, or justify. You can create uh, different um, rows and columns, okay, so if you need to create a grid, here's what you can do here, you can type in however many you need. Very simple. Now over here we have a few of other options that you don't get with most, uh, you don't get with all uh, different writing document software. Spreadsheets rather. Not spreadsheets, documents, sorry. First thing we have here is we have a little microphone icon. This is pretty cool. So what you can do is you can actually take an audio note. So let's say um, I'm going to just put in a little note. Let's pretend we're doing that chocolate cake recipe and I want to give someone uh, some special instructions. I can just click on this little microphone icon here and you'll see I have a button that appears that says record. Make sure you, when you bake the cake that you don't overcook it because then it will be bad. Sorry, e improv has never been my strength. So now you'll see that it has created a wave file 
of the audio that I just recorded so that myself or anyone else viewing this will now be able to either play it, of course the triangle is the universal symbol for play, or download it. You wouldn't probably want to download this, but that's how it works. I'm going to delete the audio note. Next here, this is kind of silly, and this is the part where I regret not shaving this morning. You can unlock your web camera. Hi, everyone. So, uh, actually, decent light. Eh, not really good lighting. So you can see yourself, for whatever reason you might want to do that in your presentation. You can take a snapshot, as you'll see here on the screen. So if you want to interject yourself into your document, selfies, not really my thing. And you can use it or cancel. Also here you'll see we have a paper clip. This is a really handy feature. You can actually include basically any type of file you want within certain restrictions on size into your document. So whether it's a photo, uh, a video file, a PowerPoint file, any kind of file you want you can attach into this document. We'll go over limitations for the free version uh, later on today. Now here at the top right of your document, you have a few other options here. This little clock with a check mark in it is where you can set a reminder date. Okay, so let's say um, you need, you're going on a trip and you need to make sure you have your passport, okay? You can set a reminder, you know, with a deadline that it will actually email you a reminder saying, remember to check out your document for important things that you have to do by this date, okay, as an example. Get out of that. The next item you'll see here, I'm actually going to uh, quickly pull an image. Um, I'm going to actually start to use one of the, I have my Chrome browser elsewhere. Let's go to Safari instead. Okay, so let's just, um, I'm just going to pull an image of a beach. Okay, so let's say I'm planning my little trip here. One of the nice things you can do is you can drag photos into your document. Okay, so here just by dragging and dropping, and I could have done this from, you know, iPhoto or just a file on my computer or the web, you can interject photos into your document here. So this next item you'll see here is called markup. So I can annotate this either as an entire PDF or just the image that I've included. So I'll do this. And you'll see here all of your little annotation options here are on the left hand side. So I can have, for example, an arrow. So I can say, you know, look, sandy beaches. Okay. And then to add in text, you have a little A over here on the side. You just click. You have uh, different drawing options. So if you want to have a circle or a box, a line, etc., just handy things for certain types of documents. Okay. Uh, let's say there's something you need to pixelate. Okay. Something I don't know inappropriate or you know passerby. You can click this and you can actually blur it out. Just kind of a handy feature. Okay. You also have some cropping images, uh, cropping options here. You can change what color all these things are. Not something that particularly a lot of people use. A lot of the um, features that you see in like the commercials, if you've seen them for the Samsung Galaxy tablets, they have a lot of, they feature a lot of this kind of thing where you can mark up an image. Anyways, you can do it for free right here within Evernote. Also here we have a presentation mode. Hopefully this will work okay. I actually use three screens to do these classes here. So as I'm going through, let me go to one of my other notes here. Okay. So here's one that we were doing um, the other day. I can create a presentation and you'll see here that my cursor kind of becomes a little bit animated here. It leaves a little trail behind it. You can scroll through your document. It's just kind of an interesting sort of an alternative to a PowerPoint. Okay. Gives it a little bit of a better way to interact around it. So instead of having slide, 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 you just have a document that you scroll through and then you can kind of highlight with your finger using your mouse different options. Okay. Kind of cool. Let's get out of that. Next here, this is the important one for anyone who wants to collaborate. Okay. Is we have the universal symbol for share. Okay. 
So a couple things about this. You can share your Evernote notes with people through either you can create a unique URL so that you can just send that out to people. Uh, you can open it in your web browser. You can also post your note to Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. You can email it or you can choose to share your entire notebook. Now again, I just want to make sure that this part is clear. If you want to collaborate with other people, meaning that they can make changes, the person who is creating the document does need to be a pro user of Evernote. The pricing structure, uh, I believe this is accurate, is either $4 a month or I believe it's $40 a year. So you save you know, a couple dollars by paying for the whole year. Now, one of the things I want to make note of uh, when I, I'm talking about Evernote here, and this is one of the problems that we do run into uh, with our classes because they're recorded and it's a snapshot in time. Today's date is June 14th of 2014. Now, as of today's date, the current operating system for the Mac is Mavericks. Now, they have just announced that Yosemite is the new operating system. And the reason why I'm bringing that up is because a lot of the features that you see here that you have only access to in the paid version of Evernote, you will gain access to for free using pages on the Mac once Yosemite comes out. I just want to make sure that there's a note of that so that people who are watching this video on YouTube six months, a year into the future understand this video is a snapshot in time. Okay, also here you have a little eye symbol here. Okay, that I is referred to as the inspector and it's where you can change different pieces of information about your document like the title. Let's say I want to simplify this. Okay, I can just take out this first part here and change the title of my document. Also, if I want to change the location of my document, you can see here I had created a travel wish list notebook. That's why it's been showing up as Puerto Vallarta. But if I want to move this into house one, it's as easy as clicking and it will move the note out of that particular notebook and into. Now when we go here into house one, there it is. Okay. Um, also, you can change the date that it was created, the date it was updated. If you want to link to a website URL, you can put that here. Okay, a couple of other little features here like add location. And of course, we have the trash symbol if you want to trash the document. Next thing I want to go over here is I very briefly want to touch on the different preferences for Evernote. Um, just uh, really kind of minor stuff, but things that you might want to be aware of. So on the Mac version, you'd go here under where it says Evernote and preferences. Okay, and this part under general is where you can set the default location. So if your primary reason for using Evernote is a way to store receipts, you can tell it by default to go to your notebook called receipts. Easy way to keep track of these things. Okay, you can see a few other options here. Syncing options, okay. Now this part can be important if you start to use Evernote a lot and you keep the free version. Let's talk about this briefly. So there's a free version of Evernote, there's a paid version of Evernote. Here's basically the difference. I'm just pulling up my notes here so I make sure I give you the right one. Okay, for the free version, you get 60 megabytes of data per month. Meaning, if I create 60 megabytes of documents, and that by the way is quite a lot. Um, it's not a lot if you start to add in photo and video and audio. But if you're just doing notes, you should be plenty fine. But let's say in one month, I create exactly 60 megabytes of data. After one month, I get access to another 60. So it's not a total. It's every month you get an extra 60 megabytes. The premium version, you get one gigabyte per month. Um, there's a few other features that you have access to in the premium version. You can search through, if you actually have a PDF that you put into Evernote, you can search that actual attachment. Also, the individual notes on the premium version can be up to 100 megabytes. Don't quote me on this, but I believe it's 20 megabyte limit per note on the free version. Um, also, on the premium version, you can view all of your documents offline on a mobile device. Um, so not a feature that I think is going to really affect many people since mobile devices are connected through cellular networks, but 
something you should maybe be aware of. Different clipping options you have here, okay, not something that's going to affect a lot of people. Um, shortcut keys, again, I don't think this is going to affect many people. If you do have trouble with small fonts, if you your vision isn't quite up to par, shall we say, you can adjust it right here so that the note text is automatically a different font size. So in my case, I've told it to go to size 24 font. Reminders, okay, you can tell it to automatically email you when these notes are due. You just put in, you know, what notebook it is and uh, it'll send it to your email address. Another feature here, I think we have a class, uh, I think we're going to do a class on the Snap Scan. It's a very, it's a somewhat expensive scanner. It's very, very fast, but you can integrate SnapScan with Evernote. For people who have businesses that get a lot of receipts and just need to keep track of them, this is a really, really good option. Um, but that's a future class coming up soon. We have to order one in order to be able to do that. Okay. Other things I wanted to mention about, let's see here. I'm just going through my notes here. Um, annotate. I went over that. Oh, let's talk actually, I want to talk a little bit about some of the features that you get with other devices. So bear with me one second as I launch my iPhone so that I can show you this feature here. So let's get it to come up on the screen for all of you. Let's go into Evernote. Okay, let's go in here. Full screen. Okay, so you're now looking right now live at my iPhone. Thank you for not calling me during this live class. Um, one of the things a lot of people like doing with this, as I mentioned, is they like keeping track of receipts. One of the features I do love about Evernote, sorry, let me turn my uh, do not disturb mode on so that my friend who texts me 50 million times a minute will stop texting me. Um, one of the things I love to do with this is I love to keep track of receipts, okay? So I have right now in front of me one that I pulled out of the trash from Amazon.com. <laughs> okay, so you can all see now what I order. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here into the camera. Okay, so that's going to launch right now live my camera. There we go. Okay, now I'm just going to keep it still here for a moment. You'll notice that at the bottom here we have a few different options. And if I swipe with my finger left and right, it goes back and forth between them. So there are different types of things that you can photograph with Evernote and what's great is it has OCR built into it. If you're not familiar with it, OCR stands for Optical Character Recognition. Recognition, yes. And so what it can do is if I take a photo of text, it will actually have the ability to convert it into actual text. Okay, so I can copy and paste, etc. So let's go, I'm going to swipe over and one of the options here is document. Now I did discover a little bug within Evernote and I'm not sure if it's just on my device or if they just haven't done an update. Let's see if it's maybe fixed now. You can probably tell right now that my flash is, yeah. So you see here it says flash off. If you're in a low lighting condition you can add your flash so that it'll stay on so you can light your document. But you will clearly see here my flash is still on even though it's supposedly off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a photo here of my receipt. Hopefully it'll be able to see enough of it. So there we have, I've taken a photo of my receipt. Okay, so now I can get out of here, hit the little checkbox, and that is now stored so that I now have it. So I can keep all of my receipts organized, you have an accountant this is one way that you can do this another feature you may have noticed right there pretty handy is there is a business card reader okay and there's a little tip I want to give you to make this work well especially those of you out there who have iPhones okay so if you use the business card scanner you have to hold your phone horizontally you'd be taking a photograph of someone's business card it's going to use that same OCR technology take the information from their card and put it into your address book. Now a lot of people out there in the various blogs report that there are problems with this. That's because there's one more step you need to do. You need to go here into settings, okay, 
And now I've got to remind myself this part here. I believe it's under general. Yes, it is, I believe. Under, is it camera, I want to say? Yes, under camera and business cards here, OK? Note this here. You have to hit save to contacts. By de default, this is turned off. So you want to turn that on. That way, for those of you who do use something like an iPhone, it will put that contact into the iCloud so you'll now have that person's contact information on all your different devices. Now there is a relationship between Evernote and LinkedIn. For those of you who have taken some of our other classes, you may know, look, I'm entitled to my opinion. Personally, I am not a fan of LinkedIn. I think it's kind of a joke. And they have a lot of little tricks that they seem to use to try to get access to all of your contacts and then e-blast the hell out of all of them, telling them to join LinkedIn. Um, so personally, I don't recommend connecting LinkedIn. You'll see I do not have it connected. Um, but uh, it has that ability so that if you do want it, it is there. Okay. There we go. So that's basically part of uh, Evernote on the iPhone. You have basically access to all of the same items here. It's just in sort of a mobile version. Okay. So there we go with that. Let's get out of that. We're now back here. A couple of other little tips I want to give you. We've, we've basically covered the, the majority of Evernote here. I'll go over a couple other little features here um, first, but then we'll give you a whole bunch of little tips that I think a lot of you could stand to benefit from. Up here at the top left, you have these two little arrows, okay, that are kind of circling around each other. That is your live sync button. So when we were in preferences, you may have seen that I set mine to automatically sync every five minutes. If you are constantly making changes to Evernote, some people may want to change this to manual. It's just a way to kind of make sure that if you may approach that limit, that 60 megabyte limit, that way you're only syncing what you really do need. Okay. Um, also here we have a little satellite icon here. That just means if you do share um, a document, for example, whenever there's activity on another device, it will give you a little update right here. Okay. Um, here on the bottom left, we have a few other little features. We have tags. So if you really get into this, let's say you're using the example of using it for recipes, you can just go here into your tag for chocolate, click on chocolate, and you'll see the two. This one was actually. I tagged this chocolate, it's not. But you'll see anything that has those particular tags associated with those documents. Atlas, kind of a silly feature here. I don't think many of you would be interested in it, but Evernote does have the ability to tag your geolocation when you create or modify a document. So what it just means is that, let's say I'm creating a travel blog, okay, and I want to know where I was when I was writing a document, I can note my location and see it there. Again, not many of you are going to probably use that. And then down here at the bottom, we have a market, which is pretty silly. It's just like products that you can buy that have the Evernote logo on it and like bags, for example. Um, and then the premium uh, market here. Not something, again, many of you are going to use. Sorry, I said $4. I meant $4.99, 5 bucks. Um, but some of the other features that you have access to here. Okay, a couple of tricks I want to give you. First of all, for those of you who have taken our classes before, um, you may have seen that we did a class before on a piece of software called Alfred. For those of you who have a Mac, Alfred is my absolute favorite app for the Mac, especially if you use your computer in business. Uh, if you're in school, it's a lifesaver. It's a little bit, okay, not really, but it's a little bit like Surrey for your computer. and Alfred and Evernote play very, very well together. So if you haven't seen it before, you can go to pcclassesonline.com, check out our video that we created on Alfred as of today's date. I think it was about a month ago, but it's an awesome, awesome app. It does play very, very well with Evernote. Also, another trick I want to show you is all of you out there have a web browser. For those of you who are live, if you don't mind maybe shouting out what web browser you use, um, there's this really nifty add-on that you can get for your web browser pretty much no matter what you use, whether it's Chrome, Safari, Firefox, or Internet Explorer, and Opera, if anyone out there actually uses Opera. 
Um, and it's called Evernote Clipper. It's free. Um, in the case of, the, probably the easiest way to get it is just go to Google and type in Evernote Clipper, uh, Web Clipper. Okay. And you'll see it pops up right here. Direct, the direct address is evernote.com slash web clipper. And it will automatically detect what web browser you're using. So I'll do it right now live for Safari. And I'm going to show you how this can really come in handy. It is a nifty feature, by the way. So I'm going to just install it here. It takes two seconds. And once you have it installed, you'll notice that at the top of your web browser, for some on Chrome, it's on the right-hand side. For Safari, it's on the left-hand side. You have that little elephant icon. Let me give you an example where I found it to be really helpful. So I am, in fact, right now planning a trip uh, for this next coming winter. We're going to take about 10 of our friends. We're all going to go down. We're not paying for them, but we're all going down to Puerto Vallarta. That's why you saw those listings pop up a while ago. And we're going to rent a house and just have a great two weeks down in Mexico. So uh, one of the best websites out there is Airbnb if you want to rent someone else's house. Okay. We have a class coming up soon on Airbnb, some of the little tricks that you can use it for. And let's say I'm typing in here, typing in Puerto Vallarta. There's going to be 10 of us. Search. Okay. So as you're going through and you're finding information here, let's just grab this location right here. This person gets a little free publicity. Okay. So you're going through and you're finding information and you want to have an easy way to save this. This is where this is really handy. Go here to that Evernote icon that you now see. Shoot, I gotta sign in. Okay, and you get a little pull down right here. And this is just a way that you can clip the critical information from this website and bring it into an Evernote document immediately. So for example here, I don't like the article version, but I love the next one, which is simplified article. So you'll see here, it converts everything to just kind of the key critical information. There's also a full page option here, okay? Uh, bookmark, which is really simplified. If you're running out of space, this is the way to go. You just get a hyperlink, brief description, one cropped photo, okay? And you're creating an entire Evernote document right here from your web browser. Screenshot. You can also live, you can, let's go to simplified article here, for example. And let's say I there's a point here I really want to hit home to my friends, okay? I can mark this document up live. So I can go here, for example, into highlighter. Oops, sorry about that. I'm sorry, that was the screen capture, my bad. Let's go into highlighter, rather. And I can highlight certain portions of this. It's really, really easy to do. When I'm done, I can either hit save or I can immediately share it with my friends. Okay, so if I hit save, watch this, you'll see how long it takes. It's immediately saying syncing. Okay, I go into Evernote. Again, I, gotta I have to click that little sync button here. Let's go into notes. Oops, let's get rid of... Uh get rid of the tags there and here we go there it is right there instantly clipped from the web I have it now I have access to it to do whatever I want that's definitely a little handy feature uh, let's see I'm gonna go into my little tips here there were a few other things I oh um, this one I, I want to give you a little story behind this other little tip here some people really like using an actual pen I totally get it. My own mother is a clinical social worker, so she has to take notes all the time. Um, but the example I want to give you here is a real life client of mine. Uh, there's a gentleman who I work with. Uh, he's kind of become uh, a friend, and he's a reporter for the New York Times, the Washington Post, Variety Magazine. Incredible guy. He's on the TED Talks, if you've heard of him, uh, of, of that before. And he was in this horrible, debilitating accident in Afghanistan. I believe it was Af it was either Afghanistan or Iraq. I forget which. And um, he lost use of his uh, left arm. I believe it's his left arm. Um, and also part of his uh, leg. And so I introduced him to this gadget, which is just completely changing his life. 
And I'm putting it out there for any of you who maybe know someone who's in the same kind of situation or any of you who just like using an actual pen. Um, I've actually added this gadget to the PC Classes online store. So that should say something about how strongly I feel about it. If you go to our website, you go to the store at the top right, okay? Uh, you can go here. It's under Miscellaneous Gadgets. And we have a class coming up on it. It's on page two. And it's called Live Scribe 3. It is a smart pen. And what it allows you to do is to actually write with a pen on a notebook. It's a special kind of notebook. I just got mine in. It's a really classy notebook. It's leather bound. It's very, very slick. And what happens is you can have Live Scribe talk to Evernote. So as you are writing, whether it's in script or you know just normal handwriting, just jotting it down, longhand, um, you can have it automatically translate your words into text. So you can edit it as a document. Really nice add-on if you decide to use Evernote. Just wanted to at least put that out there. It's not cheap. It's $200, at least as of right now, but it's a pretty, pretty cool option here. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I hope you've all enjoyed this class on Evernote. The people who are here live have been submitting questions this whole time. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to get over to their questions. For those of you who've been watching this on our website, um, thank you for watching. Check out some of our other videos. Those of you who are watching this on YouTube, please remember we are a completely free public service. There are no hidden fees here. You can sign up on our website at pcclassesonline.com. Final point, if you are watching us on YouTube. We really, really do appreciate it if you click that little like button beneath the video. We appreciate that. Thank you, everyone. We'll hopefully see you soon. For those of you who are here live, let's get to your questions. Hey, everyone. Sorry for that rough cut right there. There are two small pieces that I forgot to put in the video that I wanted to add back in. One I wanted to note is that another feature you do gain access to in the premium version of Evernote is that you can also password protect a document. Someone here in the live classes was asking about taking a photo of her credit cards so that she had it, you know, just in case something was stolen, for example. Um, what I would do, you can do it one of two ways. So you can do it with the paid version so that you password protect the document. The other option is you can create a Word document or a Pages document, password protect that, put your photos of your credit cards in that. You could also use this with passwords, for example. And then password protect the document and attach it to an Evernote. So hopefully that was clear. If you don't know how to do that, there is a class that we recorded a while back called How to Securely Store Your Passwords, uh, where I show you how to create a password protected document. So between this and that video, it should show you how to do it. The other feature, I apologize, I forgot to mention, I do want to make special note of, is there is a trick I want to show you for storing your receipts, okay? Now, I'm going to show you this on a Mac, but this works basically with every email software out there. So first thing I want to talk about is when you go into Evernote, there's this option here to show your account info. Now, for those of you who are watching this after the fact, you're going to see it blurred out here. Um, because it's going to reveal the email address that I use for this, even though I don't really personally use Evernote a lot. So here there's a portion where it says email notes to, and it gives you a unique email address, also with one button which you can click to add that address into your address book. Here's the trick I want to show you. Let's say you're a busy person like myself, you get receipts in all the time, and you want to have a really easy way to have it auto store those receipts. Watch this. Now I'm showing you right now an Apple Mail. Again, this applies to base basically everything out there. Sorry, ignore this. This is a new computer. So it's just putting a bunch of stuff in here. This is a dummy email account, so ignore anything you may see. Okay, uh, we've talked about in the past uh, about different ways that you can have it auto sort information. This is one trick. So if you have the Apple Mail software, watch this. You can go here into Mail Preferences, and here at the top menu bar, we have Rules. So what we're going to do, I'm going to delete it here because I'm going to recreate it, is I'm going to create a new rule so that any emails that come in, and if they have, for example, in the subject the word Receipt or the word Invoice, I can have it automatically forward that 
email, that invoice, into Evernote. A really easy, easy way to have it automatically store your receipts. So I can call it whatever I want, so let's just call it uh, Evernote Receipts. And now I'm going to create a series of conditions. So I'm going to say if the subject contains the word invoice, add a rule, or has the subject contains the word receipt. It is going to automatically forward the message to and then that email address that some of you just saw, others of you saw blurred out, you would paste right here. So it's going to be a totally automated process. Really handy little trick. I hope you enjoy that one. Um, and of course you could do this for other things too. So for example, if you have that one friend who just sends you a million recipes, okay, you can do the same process. You could say if it has the word recipe, okay, you can have it automatically forward into Evernote for you. Okay, so I wanted to make sure I put that there in the video. Again, apologies for the rough cut, but I hope you enjoyed this video.